Hello, I'm Dr. Jill Sutherland, Fellow Emeritor of Newnham College. I'm going to try to guide you through a series of snapshots, capturing some of the first 150 years of Newnham's life. It's a story of ambition, courage, persistence, a great deal of hard work, and sisterhood. It all began with a series of lectures for ladies in Cambridge. Almost immediately, it became clear that accommodation in the city was needed. A house was leased overlooking Parker's Peace, and there in 1871, five students and Anne Jemima Clough began what became Newnham College. Demand for places to attend those lectures for ladies in Cambridge was from the beginning intense, and they only lasted a year in that rented house. For the next two years, they were able, owing to the generosity of St. John's College, to move to Merton Hall, which is the house behind me. There, they were happy for two years, enjoying not only the house, but also the gardens. The college leased a piece of land from St. John's College and began to construct its own building. The first students moved in there in October 1875, coexisting with the builders who hadn't quite finished at the very first. The most recent building on the site of Newnham College was the Dorothy Garrard Building, opened in 2019. The experience of the women in the First World War was a difficult one. Uh, they supported the college chari uh, charity throughout the war was the Scottish Women's Hospital Fund. And very many of the Newnham students completed their courses and then went to work uh, for those hospital units on the Eastern Front, where they were welcomed with open arms by the Russian and Serbian armies. The end of the First World War, they made what was in fact a second attempt to admit women to full membership of the University of Cambridge. Sadly, that vote in 1921 went down to defeat, uh, and undergraduates celebrating the defeat of the women swarmed over to Newnham uh, and did a great deal of damage, including destroying the lower half of the bronze gates, which had been constructed as a memorial to Anne Jemima Clough. In World War II, the women's contribution to the war effort was more generally and easily acknowledged than it had been during World War I. Though in both wars, the solidarity of sisterhood was a powerful binding force. But World War II saw a more general acceptance of the importance of trained and qualified women to the war effort. Women were subject to conscription, the same as men. So the archaeologist Dorothy Garrard spent her war years interpreting aerial reconnaissance photographs for the RAF. The geographer Lucia Windsor went straight into secret work on computer-aided mapping as soon as she graduated in 1942. The anthropologist Camilla Wedgwood, a lieutenant colonel in the Australian Army, was dropped by parachute behind Japanese lines in New Guinea in 1944. Neither war had forced Newnham to close its doors. The gardens were turned over to vegetables. And in World War II, trenches were dug, although Cambridge suffered relatively little from bombing raids. The same resourcefulness marked the college's response to pandemic from the spring of 2020. Even after the rebuffs of 1897 and 1921, the women persevered. These wartime contributions and many more strengthened the case for full membership of the university. Yet even after conceding that in 1948, the university authorities worried continuously about being swamped by women at the start, there was an actual quota. 
That got abolished in 1960. But the university authorities clung on to the right to limit numbers of women till as late as 1987. Cambridge was the last university in the UK to admit women to full membership. In its admissions, Newnham has always been both international and inclusive. It's been aided in this by its undenominational ecumenical stance. The college does not have a chapel. It's nurtured both brilliant scholars and brave women who have fought for all manner of causes. They run from the very beginning from one of the co-founders, Millicent Fawcett, the suffragist, who fought for the vote, through to Pat Arrowsmith, a student of the late 1940s, who has been to prison 11 times on behalf of her campaign for nuclear disarmament. No, I'd better not say that. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the finale of this virtual festival of art, science and ideas to celebrate 150 years since the founding of Newnham College in 1871. You've just been watching the Cambridge University Gospel Choir formed in November 2016 by Gate scholar Carol Ivey, Newnham College 2015, who completed a doctorate in plant science at Newnham. And that was a pre-pandemic recording of Oh Happy Day featuring Carol herself as conductor. That was followed by Birgitta Olofsson's film, Newnham College, The First 150 Years, featuring fellow emerita, Dr. Jill Sutherland. Jill has done so much to record the early history of the college. And we wanted to show you that video again, specially commissioned for this weekend. Now, at this point, my script talks about reflecting on the festival, um, and that's just a really difficult thing to do. I haven't watched everything, but I've watched probably 80%, and it's all been amazing. So uh, it's quite difficult to pull out anything in particular. I think I would just say it's shown the amazing talent in Newnham, in science, arts, and humanities, and the amazing creativity in words, music, art, needlework, gardening, architecture and dance. It's also shown something of the deep social and political concern uh, that's always been part of Newnham, uh, with emphasis on uh, tackling climate change, on parenting, on feminism, on business ethics. And then much more of those sort of intangible Newnham qualities, friendship, curiosity, I loved uh, Sarah Lefano's phrase, open yourself to many possibilities. And we've heard a lot from women who've changed directions, found new interests. Uh, their lives have taken different courses than perhaps they'd expected when they were at college. And I hope that's a tremendous encouragement to us all. The pre-recorded items are all available on our website now. The live events which have been recorded will be lightly edited and then they will be made available on our website. We'll let you know when that will be and they will be available for at least a fortnight after if we can put them up for longer, we will do. And I'm delighted to announce that Newnham College's Guild of Friends have awarded a special prize to Lottie Mills our JCR president for her, for her special anniversary short story, which was released earlier today. Do listen to it. Lottie won the BBC Young Writers Award in 2018 and her new story written specially for us is just as wonderful. So what comes next for our celebration of Newnham 150? Well, please order your copy of the second Newnham anthology, Walking on the Grass, Dancing in the Corridors, Newnham 150, which will be published in October. It will contain a smorgasbord from the whole Newnham community, fellows, alumni, students, staff, visitors alike. 
There'll be extracts of journals, drawings, photographs, door notepads, interviews, and some recently discovered archival material to capture something of the whole experience of being at Newnham. And this isn't just a collection of individual stories. Um, it charts the history of women's education in Cambridge, but also presents a close portrait of a college by those who've lived and worked there. And Dr. Jill Sutherland has written a special introduction on Newnham's importance uh, to women's education since the college was founded. Then there'll be more events. Uh, there'll be a special 150th version of Newnham in Conversation as part of the University Alumni Weekend on Sunday the 26th of September. Dr. Claire Barlow and Dr. Sakthi Salva Kumaran will be speaking about all things engineering. And this also will mark Claire's retirement as a fellow of Newnham College at the end of September after 41 years. Though I'm delighted to say she will then become a fellow emerita. We will continue the 150th anniversary lecture series with our next lecture on Friday the 22nd of October. Professor Jane Humphreys, CBE, FBA, Fellow of All Souls, Oxford, and Professor of Economic History will talk to, her, talk to us. Her research interest is in economic growth, development, and the Industrial Revolution. And then our final 150th lecture will be by Professor Mary Beard, and we hope to organise that in person in February 2022. Then uh, students, staff and alumni have been busy in the last six months putting together projects for funding from our 150th Open programme. So look out for updates on those projects as they come to fruition. Uh, we'll put information in our regular alumni updates. So the projects include a feminist history map, talks on student mental health, Black Students of Newnham photo series, Two American Women at Eva Smith House, the Newnham Queer Archiving Project, an exhibition of women who've gone from Newnham to elected office at Westminster, a celebration of the Muslim women of Newnham, and more projects to come. One of our major projects is around trees, and our tree planting programme will continue throughout the year. This is an idea from the former president of the Newnham Roll Committee, Joe Birch, who's given us a quote from the Woodland Trust, who says that trees are the ultimate multitaskers in the fight against climate change. And Joe says it's often when you talk to alumni about their memories of Newnham, it's the gardens and often particular trees. I know for me, uh, it's walking under those horse chestnut trees after my first supervision and picking up the horse chestnuts, picking up the conkers, in fact, from the ground. And then another tree memory for me from the first graduation I presided over as principal in this last week. Um, the enormous lime trees on Clough Hall just buzzing with beads in the blossom so loud you could you could tape it on your iphone and just hear that that sort of well it's not a cacophony it's a beautiful sound of those bees buzzing away so the trees are really important i think as a as a memory a shared memory for newnham alumni um, which is why joe thought when we agreed that a worldwide tree planting project would be a joyful way of connecting alumni and alumni groups around the world and giving a sense of planting greenness, shade and beauty for future generations. Um, there's a lovely ancient Greek proverb, which we've slightly adapted, which says, society grows great when old women plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit under. So we're hoping to plant at least 150 trees uh, around, the, around the world, um, which will show the location on an interactive map on the college website. We planted our inaugural tree at college on Monday the 1st of March this year at the beginning of JCR Green Week and others have been planted in Essex, Cambridgeshire, Yorkshire, Singapore and Shetland. Uh, we know that tree plantings are already planned elsewhere in Scotland, Australia, Norfolk, the Chilterns, Cyprus, India, Oxford, Manchester, Wales and the USA to mention just a few. And we're also hoping to plant trees in schools which have recently sent their first student to Cambridge and uh, to some schools in the Cambridge area. Thank you so much to all those who have planted or who are planning to plant uh, a tree. There's more information on our 150th website, microsite, if you are interested in getting involved. And then we're starting to look forward to next year's festival, uh, which we're very much hoping to hold in real life. Uh, that we will do some blended events so that those of you who can't get here can take advantage of uh, the technology we've appreciated so much this weekend to take part. 
uh, and a couple of things link the two festivals. So yesterday we heard from Harriet Truscott, Newnham College 1996, and one of Newnham's Director of Communications, and uh, undergraduate Marcella Keating about their new song celebrating the Newnham flower, the iris. And you'll be able to hear the song performed for the first time at next year's festival in the gardens. And we're also planning a performance of Benjamin Britten's Flower Songs. In the autumn, we will launch an emerging composers competition with a composition to be premiered next July. This is an idea developed by Dr. Delphine Mordi, our Director of Studies in Music, and Sheila Heyman, Leenham College 1974, and the three times great granddaughter of Fanny Mendelssohn. I hope you saw Sheila's wonderful 30 minute film uh, for the virtual festival about Fanny Mendelssohn. That's another one that's well worth catching up on. And we launched another competition this weekend, rather amazingly. There's a link to Fanny Mendelssohn in that competition too. Edith Renouf, one of the very early uh, Newnhamites and uh, Newnham College 1881, donated a collection of books and manuscripts to Newnham Library. Renouf was the great niece of two celebrated German romantic writers, the Brentanos. And in 2007, the Renouf collection was rediscovered, putting Newnham College Library on the map of institutional libraries with significant holdings in German romanticism. Earlier this weekend, Mathalina Nebogodi introduced one of the loveliest works in the Renouf collection, a poem by Brentano's friend Louisa Hensel. Louisa was well connected in the intellectual and artistic elite of 19th century Berlin, and her painter brother Wilhelm was married to none other than Fanny Mendelssohn. Mathalinda discussed and translated Der Armen Kleinod, The Poor Little Thing, for us in her contribution to this virtual festival. And the competition invites you to bring your own voice to Louisa's poem by using it as a springboard to creativity, not translation in a narrow sense, more a way of meditating on books and heritage, the passage of time, and how books can be tokens of the past in our present. And there'll be more details of how to take part in that competition on our website. What else will happen at next year's festival? Well, we'll continue and update the conversation started on so many issues this year, climate change, families, education and research, women in maths, science and engineering, women in words. We'll follow up on this year's very successful women in business conversation with a conversation on women in finance and investment. There will be food, artists and the chance to meet in person and lots more ideas to come. And do let Sarah Carthew, our development director, know if you've got ideas you'd like to suggest too. As you can imagine, the pandemic meant a complete rethink of what we've done this weekend. This was going to be our real life festival. And as you've noticed, we've done it all virtually. So I'm hugely grateful to development director, Sarah Carthew, who picked up this project immediately on her arrival uh, when she started as development director, for festival director Claire Salford, comms directors uh, Sarah Carthew, uh, sorry, comms directors Harriet Truscott and Eleni Callanus, and to Beth, Charlotte, Mally, Roz, and Lindsay from the development team for all their creativity and sheer hard work, not just this weekend, but in the weeks and months building up to it, just to get us to this, to this point. And I'd also like to say a huge thank you to those who've given of their time, talents and money to enable this year's virtual festival to take place to such a high, inspiring and fun uh, quality. New the members, past and present, are a generous and talented bunch. Now, it wouldn't be Newnham if there wasn't food, even in a digital festival, and it wouldn't be Newnham if that food wasn't cake. So before our finale ends, I will cut a wonderful cake to mark the end of this year's virtual festival and start of a further year of celebrations of the past 150 years and the beginning of the next 150 years of Newnham. After I've cut the cake and to draw the finale to a close, we'd like to play for you again the very special original composition of film and music, Your Own Ark, which was composed especially for us by Dr. Una Monaghan, Unum College 2002, who was also the Rosamond Harding Research Fellow from 2016 to 2019. It is best listened to through headphones. So there'll be a short pause while I move over to the cake.
So we here we have this amazing cake. Uh, you'll see it's uh, uh, the first building of, of Newnham, um, Old Hall, uh, which was originally uh, Newnham Hall and then North Hall and now known to most of us as Old Hall. And the attention to detail from the students made this for us is such that it even has the No Cycles sign uh, stuck in the corner. I don't know if you probably can't see that on the screen. So I'm now going to be brave and cut this amazing cake to end this finale and to look forward to the next year of amazing celebrations.